This video is a short clip from my full course, How to Use Masks in Photoshop, from beginner to expert in less than two hours. Link is in the description. So what is a mask? Let's say you create a circular active region, something like this, and then go down here to create a mask. Again, the entire point of this class has to do with this button down here, which is how to add a mask. We're gonna click that. And I am aware that for many, this is going to be a review. We will be ramping up, but I wanna make sure we're all on the same page first. So when you create a mask, what you have is you have a black and white image that's been created next to your main image. Let's do it again when I'm not zoomed in. So we have the active region. I click on this button, pay attention to the layer palette, and this happens. A black and white image is appearing. And wherever it's white, the image is revealed. And wherever it's black, the image is hidden. You could think of it as an alpha mat. You could think of it as a stencil. It's a stencil that reveals part of an image. This is cool because you can do things such as unlink it and then move the image around in the stencil or alternatively, move the stencil around the image. So right there, that's great. And there's a few ways to create a mask. So I'm going to delete this and we're going to create it another way. Do I want to apply it? No, I do not. Delete. Um, so let's get this layer back there. And let's say you don't have an active region selected. If you hit create a layer mask, pay attention to the layer palette. A layer mask is created. It looks like nothing happened. But what happens is you have a stencil where nothing is cut out of the piece of paper. So then what we could do is we could, you know, go into the brush tool and let's make sure that it's, it's black right here. Woo, yay. And we're able to brush things out, creating a stencil that looks like this great stencil and works like this. And what's really amazing about a mask is any way that you're able to manipulate a black and white image is how you're able to manipulate this selection. So if I were to go ahead and create an active region and paint just in that active region, I then get a selection that looks like this. In this case, this looks awful. In other cases, this is incredible and amazing. Let's delete this mask again. I want to make absolutely sure it's clear what the mask is and how it is working. All right, let's do it again. Let's create a mask another way. Uh, here, let's actually make that a little bit smaller. That looks good. And instead of clicking this button, I'm going to go here, um, which is, you know, all of these are at the bottom of the layer palette. Um, I'm going to go here, which is create a color adjustment layer. And you've probably used this half cookie or half moon cookie button before. Um, and what it does, pay attention to the layer palette again. Let's make hue saturation. It creates another layer. And this time on that layer, as you see, is a mask. And let's actually have this uh, layer do something. There we go. Ooh, pretty. Um, uh, and what we have right here is we have a layer that's doing something. And in this case, what the layer is doing is adjusting the colors of everything below. And there's a mask on it and we can move this mask around. When I do this, the mask moves around. Because it's a color adjustment layer, I don't need to unlink it, but I can, you know, just for the sake of consistency. Um, but we can keep these linked right here. So what we're looking at right here, and this is what I want you to, to understand, is three things. First thing is the image. Second thing is the color adjustment layer that is affecting the entire image. But but wait, Jeremy, you say, because you remembered my name, I appreciate that. But wait, Jeremy, it looks like it's only affecting this one circle right there. Aha, aha, uh, not quite. What it's doing is it's affecting the entire image and there is a mask placed on top of it saying only show through for where the mask is. So that was confusing, let me show you what I mean. If we turn off this mask, we can see that this color adjustment layer is affecting the entire thing. Or let's even delete this mask completely. Delete. And this color adjustment layer is affecting the entire image. The only way for it to affect a portion of the image is for us to create a mask. So we're going to go here and create a mask. And this looks pretty similar to how it was before. A lot of people, when they're using layer masks, they only know that there's a black and white image that happens when they create a color adjustment layer and they previously had a selection, but they don't quite know what that black and white image is. And what it is, is a mask. We could even turn this layer off so there's no color adjustment layer showing. And we could drag this mask onto the layer and the mask then applies to the layer. 
because the mask and the layers are two different things. The mask is a black and white image that is being applied to the layer. But we can drag this onto any layer we want. So we're going to keep showing this. Let me show you uh, one more example. Uh, let's say here, I'm going to delete this. And let's say that we wanted to change the color of this uh, airplane. So what are we going to do? We'll do color or select color range. And let's just select on the red. And here, we'll just pump it up all the way. I don't need to get too fine of a control. And then we're going to go to the same thing, hue saturation, and change the color of this mask. Nope. Did I just say change the color of the mask? Please ignore that. And we are going to change the color in hue saturation. The mask stays exactly the same. Now, when we have a, a circle, it's very clear what's happening. We have a stencil. The stencil is in the shape of a circle. What's less clear is when we have a stencil and it's the shape of whatever this is. But it's the exact same idea. We have a color adjustment layer, and that color adjustment layer is affecting the entire image. But then we have a stencil, which is in the shape of where the red used to be. And that makes it so we're only able to see the color adjustment layer where the stencil is letting it go through. And we can move the stencil around. I don't quite know why we would. Here, maybe we do some crazy thing with the color. And we want to be like, yeah, woo, it's a, it's a thing in the sky. Um, probably you're just going to keep it where it was, probably using undo a couple of times. Uh, but we could move this around because all we're doing is moving around the stencil. So what I want to make absolutely clear with this is that all that a mask is, is a black and white image that is being used as a stencil applied to the original image. Here's the black and white image. Here's the main image. And anything we do to this defines what the stencil is for this. So for instance, here, let's do one more example, and then I'll actually start showing you how to do very advanced things yourself. So one more example. Let's say you wanted to select out this, uh, this airplane from the image. You could probably only do that by using masks. So I'm going to time lapse this, but by the end of the course, you'll be able to do this yourself. So here, let me get a good selection. And that, my friends, is the power of masks right there. So obviously I went through that way, way, way too quickly. But by the end of this class, you will be able to do that yourself. Uh, let's get into what the major keyboard shortcuts are, just so we're all very comfortable making these sorts of changes. If you liked this video and want to learn more about the ins and outs of using masks to get great selections, please check out the full class. It starts here and then ramps up to how to do complicated hair selection. In less than two hours, it covers what takes most people years to learn. And if you want to be a tester for new classes I release, aka get a free one-on-one -on -one class with me, just add yourself to my mailing list. Again, if you want a free one-on-one -on -one session with me, as my guinea pig for new classes, add yourself to the mailing list. All right, that link's also below. Thanks for joining me.